Welcome to the Behavioral Sciences section of our Practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 21 to 25. So first, I'll show you the questions so you guys can attempt them on your own. Here's question 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 21, we're asked which of the following scenarios best depicts the absolute threshold of detection. So the absolute threshold of detection in psychology, this is the minimum threshold for us to even detect something. So it's a threshold of detection. If some signal reaches this threshold, then we can detect it and know that, okay, there has been some signal which has been identified. This is different from the recognition threshold. So for something to reach the recognition threshold, that's a threshold that a signal needs to be for us to recognize it and then actually determine what that signal is. So for example, something can just hit, hit the absolute threshold of detection and then you can detect that there's a noise coming, some song is playing, but until it hits like the recognition threshold, that's when, that's the only time when you can be able to determine which song it is or what this light that you're seeing is, anything like that. So absolute threshold and then the recognition threshold are a bit different. So in option A, it says the intensity of a sound is increased to the point where a person is able to tell that the sound has increased in intensity. This is different. This is talking about the intensity that a sound must change for us to determine that there has been a change. So this is talking about being able to determine a change in signal. So rather than just thinking a signal is constant, we know that it's changed, but we're talking about the absolute threshold, which is when we first detect a signal initially. So A is incorrect. B is saying a light is shined into a person's eye such that when the intensity of the light is increased, the person is blinded. No. This is just talking about a very intense signal that is just way too intense for the person's eyes and it's when they're blinded. But that's not the absolute threshold. The absolute threshold is just any amount of light that needs to enter a person's eye for them to recognize that some object is emitting light. So B is incorrect. C is saying a candle is lit in the distance on an otherwise dark night. A person can tell that something is off in the distance, but cannot identify what it is. Yeah, this is perfect. There's a candle that's lit, and a person can tell that something is off in the distance, so they can recognize that there is a signal coming. Otherwise, it's dark, but because of this light, they can recognize that there's a signal, but it's not so much that they can actually identify what it is. Although they might be able to identify it as well if it hit the recognition threshold, but just the fact that they can recognize that there is a signal, that's the absolute threshold. And then option D is saying a song is played just loud, loudly enough that a person can identify the song being played. No, that's incorrect because it seems to imply, so because a person can identify the song, it seems to imply that this, this signal has gone above the recognition threshold and that's higher than the absolute threshold. So something has to pass the absolute threshold first and then the recognition threshold for them to be able to identify the song. If it's just played loud enough that someone can tell that some type of music is playing but they can't really identify what it is, that's more so related to the absolute threshold. So C is the best answer. In question 22, it says imitation by children of their surroundings is a critical component of what sociological factor? Option A is saying socialization, that's correct. So socialization is a way in which we learn the norms and cult the norms and regulations and all of that culture that goes along with the society that we're in. So socialization is, first of all, it can be taught to someone, but another part of it is that children need to imitate others around them. So when they imitate others around them, then they begin to behave in the same way and then realize what is correct, what is incorrect, and through this they learn like norms and values that a culture has. So imitation is a key part of socialization. Option B is saying out-group development. That's incorrect. So in sociology, we have in-groups and out-groups. In-group is the one that you belong to, and an out-group is someone that you're kind of against. So it's kind of like a, a rival group, an enemy group. And if anything, when you do have imitation happening in children, they're learning to be more like their in-group. And so they're not learning to be like their out-group. They're probably going against their out-group because they have different norms and values. 
and so it doesn't make sense for imitation to be a key part of outgroup development. C is saying self-efficacy, but self-efficacy is a bit more complicated than that. So self-efficacy is believing in oneself, like knowing that you can carry out a certain behavior and then it can lead to the desired action that you want. So just knowing that you can actually accomplish the goals that you want to. That's self-efficacy. It's this confidence that you have. And so that has to be built up over time and a person needs to work on that and they need to have positive results coming from the actions that they put into the world for them to be able to have this confidence. But it doesn't just happen just by them imitating their surroundings. So that doesn't really relate with self-efficacy. It's more so socialization. And then D is saying developing a locus of control. No, that's kind of related to self-efficacy. You can have an internal locus of control, say that things that happen to you are because of your own actions, or you can have an external one saying that whatever happened to you was because of the environment and you can't really control it. That is dependent on some other factors in the way in which someone's life progresses, the things that happen to them. It's not necessarily just really related to this imitation that children have of their surroundings. That's more so learning about roles and norms and laws and culture of the society that they're in, all of those types of things. And so that's related to socialization best. In question 23, it says, with respect to psychology, the biopsychosocial model states that what? So biopsychosocial model, it's kind of apparent in the name. It's talking about biology, psychology, and sociology all have an important part to play in diagnosing a patient. So we can't just look at a patient and diagnose them with something based on just biological factors. And then we also can't do it based on just psychological or sociological factors either. We need to integrate all three of these approaches and take something from all of them in, or able to have, in order to have a complete diagnosis. So that's what this model states. So we're looking for an answer that says something along those lines. So option A is saying psychological disorders are often due to either prevailing biological factors or social factors. So that's incorrect because it's implying that it's only due to biology and sociology and it's not really even explaining what psychology has to do in terms of diagnosing a disorder and so that is going to be incorrect. B is saying most psych psychiatric processes are typically a result of specific biological underpinnings so sorry about that that would be incorrect that's a more biological approach and it's not talking about psychology and sociology c is saying biological elements of psychological disease are are irrelevant and that's incorrect it it does not say that the biological aspect is in, is irrelevant or not necessary to consider it actually states that it's a key part that we must consider and so option d is correct it says the biological psychological and social processes, they often work in tandem with respect to mental health. So when we have a psychological disorder that we are diagnosing someone with, we have to consider the biological factors that led to this mental health disorder and the psychological factors and the social factors and consider all of them together and know that they all play a part. In question 24, we're asked which of the following examples best fits within the notion of social reproduction. So social reproduction, what does that mean? Social reproduction generally means when the socioeconomic standing of one generation is passed on to the next. So when something is passed on from the parents to their children, for example, if they happen to ha have a poor standing in the socioeconomic gradient, they are maybe someone who's below the poverty line then all of that is passed on to the children. So there's some material factors, such as the wealth that they have that's passed on, but then also social capital is passed on, their availability for to access education and health services, that is passed on. And because of this, we are reproducing the same kind of life in the next generation. So that generation is also going to be in poverty, and that's how, that's how the social class standing kind of prevails from generation to generation. The same thing is ha happening for a wealthy family. So wealthy parents are, tra are passing on their wealth to their offspring. And then that's how we have this class division continuing to survive. 
So that is social reproduction. We're looking for something which fits in with that kind of explanation. Option A is saying that norms of courtship are transmitted horizontally through a single generation through cultural diffusion. So that's incorrect. We are talking about vertical transmission from parents to the next generation. This is just talking about norms of courtship, so how people kind of, how dating kind of progresses in a generation is transmitted horizontally through a single generation, through cultural diffusion. This is just talking about how an aspect of culture is transmitted through one kind of peer group or one age group. And so it's not really relevant to what we're talking about. Option B is talking about, is saying that people mimic the cultural norms of their peers in order to fit in. So that's incorrect. That's also kind of like A. It's just talking about one generation and it's talking about horizontal transmission. It's talking about people becoming more like their peers. This is just kind of like learning a role in society, things like that. It's not so much social reproduction. It's not something that their parents gave them. C is saying financial literacy, including the ability to maximize tax breaks, is transmitted from parents to children. Yes, that's correct. We're talking about something that is transmitted from parents to children, and so that is social reproduction. That is whatever their socioeconomic standing is being transmitted from the parents to the, ch to the children, and then that's reproduction of this class division. And then finally, option D is saying a child will tend to match the education level of her peers rather than that of her parents. And that's kind of going, well, it could go either way. But it's kind of different from social reproduction, which kind of says that parents pass on like their level of education to their children. And then in this case, a child is matching it to the, their peers. That could either be better than the parents or worse off, but either case... Since it's talking about matching something to peers and not so much about matching something to their parents, it's incorrect, just like A and B was. In question twenty four in question twenty five, sorry, we're asked which of the following is not a component of emotional intelligence. So what's not a component and then of emotional intelligence? So emotional intelligence is being able to properly perceive emotions understand emotions and manage emotions so managing our own emotions and being in control of them and then also kind of helping others manage their emotions that's also kind of related to someone having a high emotional intelligence themselves so which one does not relate to that a is saying managing the emotions of others no that is a component of emotional intelligence if you can manage the emotion of others that implies that you're really good at managing your own emotions as well and so you have high emotional intelligence. Option B is saying reacting with appropriate emotions. That is correct. Well, that's incorrect in answer because it is a component of an emotional intelligence if you react with the appropriate emotion instead of the wrong emotion for the given situation. Option C is saying understanding one's own emotional state. This would be like the most basic component of emotional intelligence. So incorrect answer. And then option D is correct. It's saying Having varying extremes of emotion during daily conversation? No, not necessarily. Just because you have high emotional intelligence doesn't mean that you have to vary between all different types of emotions and like sample them all out and try all of them within a day or something like that. It just It's more so what's shown in A, B, and C. More so that you understand this is the correct emotion to display in a given situation and you're very in control of that. That is more so emotional intelligence. That doesn't mean that you're gonna feel a lot of different emotions in a daily conversation. You're just gonna feel the ones that you really should feel. So that's why D is an incorrect answer for emotional intelligence and then it's the correct answer for question 25. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw in this video, make sure to check out our course on teachable.com. The link is in the description below. In the course, we go through a lot more questions and then break down all the different answer options that are given just like this video. So if you liked it, make sure to check that out. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel to see all the videos we put out over here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.